your motto. For Watch to Win, this is the last day that we're giving away a fabulous £1,000 holiday from the Falcon Holiday Summer Sun 2004 brochure. To get yourself in with a chance to be our final Summer Sun winner, try your luck with this question. Which Irish band sang New Year's Day, Westlife The Course or U2? If you think you know the answer, just phone the number appropriate to you, 0915 66 55 66 or 1550 Lines for this holiday will close finally at midnight. You can also enter via u.tv. We saw 11 idols from four continents perform. Which one is the world idol? Come on, Will. Find out tonight at 7.30 on UTV. Safari tragedy. Eight British tourists die in minibus crash. Revealed the true identity of the man accused of murdering a policeman. Michael Jackson arrest. Police release tapes to deny rough treatment. And for some, New Year started with a bang. For others, it was a washout. The ITV News with Nicholas Owen. Good evening. A minibus full of British holiday makers has crashed in South Africa, killing eight of them. It happened when the driver swerved to avoid a man apparently trying to kill himself who stepped in front of the vehicle. The tourists have been in the country for 10 days and were on a New Year's Eve trip to the Natal National Park. Angus Walker reports. The minibus carrying 11 tourists on a safari tour crashed after swerving to avoid a pedestrian apparently intent on committing suicide. Eight British passengers were killed, among them Roger Pearce and his wife Linda from Rickmansworth in Hertfordshire. Dr Pearce had just celebrated his birthday and retirement from a career in the NHS. This evening, Dr Pearce's brother Geoffrey spoke for the family. They've left three daughters and their grandpa absolutely distressed and distraught by something that's happened so suddenly. I'm shaking because I've only just, I just was driving past, not, I'm just driving past, just dropped my daughter off at the stables. And I saw these cars, I thought, oh God, it must be true then. Because we were rather hoping there's several pierces in the world. It was just complete shock, but you don't expect somebody who lives that close to you to actually die in that way. The 17-day holiday was nearly over. The tour operators insist the driver was reliable and experienced. And we do hold safety as paramount for all of our trips. Um, the, the, um, the bus that was being used was fully licensed and regulated to be able to run these sorts of holidays. South Africa has a terrible road safety record. In one 12-month period, there were close to 15,000 deaths. Four years ago, 26 Britons were killed when their tour bus skidded off a wet road and down a mountainside. The driver was later jailed for six years after admitting he was to blame. In this case, it seems suicide has led to much more tragedy. Angus Walker, ITV News. The real identity of the nightclub bouncer charged with murdering a Leeds police officer on Boxing Day was revealed in court today. He's David Francis Bieber, a former US Marine. He was charged under that name with the murder of PC Ian Broadhurst and with the attempted murder of two fellow officers. He was known in this country as Nathan Coleman. Mark Webster was in court. Mark. During his 24-minute court appearance here, he was charged under his real name, David Bieber. Standing in the dock behind a plate glass bulletproof screen, he spoke only once to say that he was born in June 1968. Thereafter, the magistrate read out the charge that on Boxing Day he'd murdered PC Ian Broadhurst and attempted to murder two of his colleagues. A police helicopter hovered overhead as teams of armed officers escorted the prison van following his court appearance. Security around him has been intense ever since his arrest. Even in the dock, he was flanked by five police officers. More sat in the body of the court. This image of David Bieber, also known as Nathan Wayne Coleman, was flashed around the country and abroad in the wake of the murder. He was finally tracked down here at a bed and breakfast in Gateshead after a tip-off from a member of the public who'd recognised him. The dead officer, PC Ian Broadhurst, was 34 and married. He was gunned down while he and a colleague were investigating a stolen car. Today, at the spot where he was murdered, flowers laid by family, 
friends and colleagues lie in the snow. The man himself was remembered as a brave and devoted officer. No application was made for bail and he was remanded in custody to a high security jail. He will next appear before the Crown Court in a week's time here in Leeds on January the 8th. Mark, thank you. He didn't sound like a man in pain as he whistled in the back of a police car, yet Michael Jackson has claimed he was roughed up by police after his arrest. The Santa Barbara sheriff is denying that very firmly. He's released tapes of the pop star in custody, including that whistling. Here's Romilly Weeks. It was certainly no ordinary arrest. Michael Jackson looks more like a visiting dignitary than a suspect as he hops off his private jet and shakes hands with police. In this new footage released by police, it all looks very civilized. But the handcuffs did go on, and at some point after this, Jackson says he was manhandled, not a charge the sheriff is prepared to accept. Mr. Jackson was treated with the utmost respect and courtesy during his arrest, transport, and booking and release by all members of this department. He was in no way manhandled or abused. And the sheriff has further ammunition yet, an audio recording made as Jackson travelled in the back of the police car. He starts by complaining his handcuffs hurt, but then appears to have a very amiable conversation. Just uh, if you want to scoot forward a little bit. Put some air on here for us. Thank you. It all seems very polite. Okay. Could you put some air on, please? Okay. Thank you. Is that okay for you, Mr. Jackson? It's wonderful. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Apparently comfortable, Jackson can then be heard whistling from the back seat. Michael Jackson first aired his complaints on American TV at the weekend. They manhandled me very roughly. My shoulder is dislocated literally. It's hurting me very badly. The sheriff is threatening to charge the singer with making a false report should his allegations prove to be unfounded. He's pointed out that not many people with dislocated shoulders have managed to wave like this. Romilly Weeks, ITV News. A 13-year-old girl and her grandmother have died in a house fire in southwest Scotland. It happened shortly after the family rang in the new year at a cottage near Sanka in Dumfries and Galloway. A third person is recovering in hospital. From today, drivers who fail to renew their tax discs on time will be hit with an automatic £80 fine. The Driver Licensing Authority will send out the punishment through the post using their computers to catch people who fail to pay up on time. There will be no system for appealing. And two more people have been found alive six days after the massive earthquake in Iran, which killed up to 50,000 people. This morning, a 27-year-old man was dug free from beneath a wardrobe which protected him from falling debris. And this eight-year-old girl was found in the ruins of her family's home. She suffered only minor leg injuries. For years now, smokers have been warned of the effects of cigarettes on their hearts. But what does the damage actually look like? Well, today, the British Heart Foundation began a campaign which shows how smoking can clog arteries. And it's not pretty. It aims to persuade smokers to give up for the new year. Here's our medical correspondent, Sue Savile. The aim of this hard-hitting television campaign is to shock with the facts. Because every cigarette we smoke makes this fatty stuff get stuck in our arteries. Our hearts can't work properly if our arteries are all clogged up. At a time when many smokers resolve to give up, this first British Heart Foundation campaign wants to show people exactly what cigarettes do to them. We wanted to give people a real understanding of what was happening in their bodies. So it's graphically demonstrating that fat in their arteries is the consequence of smoking. Well, I think that it is de-glamorising smoking. We tested out the new TV ad in a pub this afternoon on these smokers. They were certainly affected by the powerful images. But Judy, who's 63 and says she's been smoking heavily for 50 years, wasn't moved to quit. It's had the right kind of shock elements and the nasty gooey...